used to pattern micro and nanoscale objects in the clean room. Clean room lights appear yellowish because they have filters that effectively block out these damaging UV rays. Human beings generate a lot of particulate. The body constantly sheds dead skin cells as the skin renews itself approximately once a month. When humans cough or sneeze, millions of particles are emitted. Hence, the human operators in the clean room need to cover their skin with protective, particle-free fabrics. First, the user must put on nitrile or latex gloves to protect their hands from exposure to harmful chemicals. Special cleaner room footwear must be worn to avoid cleaner room contamination from shoes. Sandals or open toe shoes must never be worn because of the danger of potential chemical spills and sharp objects. Cleaner room gowns cover the majority of the body and also any fibrous clothing that is worn. This prevents skin, hair, and other fibers from contaminating the cleaner room environment. Prior to gowning, the user should check their coveralls for tears and other damage, and if found, replace it immediately. Protective eyewear is worn to shield the user from harmful chemical splashes. Face masks are worn to avoid inhalation of harmful chemical vapors. And finally, a bouffant cap is put on to isolate the user's hair from the clean room environment. A wafer is a thin slice of semiconductor material, such as silicon, used in the fabrication of integrated circuits and other micro devices. The wafer is usually cut from a larger crystal that has a definite orientation. The slice is then extensively polished to ensure its flatness and reproducibility in physical and chemical properties. Silicon wafers are commonly used because of widespread utility in the semiconductor industry. In fact, most IC chips, such as memory or processors, are made with silicon wafers. Silicon wafers also feature ultra-flat, single crystal, and clean surfaces that can be considered as the perfect substrate to fabricate micro and nanoscale devices. The following is an animation created by Silicon Valley Technical Institute demonstrating how silicon wafers are manufactured. Before we can build anything on top of the wafer, we first need to clean the surface to remove any unwanted organics and debris by rinsing with acetone, methanol, and isopropanol. After the wafer is rinsed with these chemicals, it is promptly rinsed with water and blown dry. One popular microfabrication technique is a process known as photolithography. Photolithography is used to selectively remove parts of a thin film. It uses light to transfer a geometric pattern from a photo mask to a light sensitive material, such as a photoresist, onto the substrate. A series of chemical treatments then engraves the exposure pattern into the photoresist material. Physical vapor deposition is a process used to coat a surface, such as a wafer, with an extremely thin layer of metal. For example, it is widely utilized in the automobile industry to coat several components, as shown here. These metal layers allow the wafer to be electrically conductive, which is necessary to carry out electrodeposition, as we will see later. As an example, conductive layers can be composed of a 50 nanometer layer of copper 
and a 100 nanometer layer of chromium. The metal to be evaporated is loaded into the evaporation chamber and held into place. Next, up to 8 silicon wafers are loaded at a time, face down. After the wafers and metal sample are loaded, the chamber cover is lowered until there is a perfectly tight seal. This panel controls two vacuum pumps used to reduce the chamber pressure all the way down to approximately 1 times 10 to the negative fifth torr. This extremely low pressure allows the metal vapor to be transported from its source to the substrate with essentially no interference. The chamber is then heated to a temperature that changes the state of the metal from solid to gas. For chromium and copper, this temperature is approximately 1100 degrees Celsius. Spin coating is a process used to apply highly precise thicknesses of chemical compounds, such as photoresist, to the surface of a substrate. A small puddle of photoresist is first deposited onto the center of the wafer, and then the wafer is spun at extreme high speeds, typically around 3000 RPM. Centripetal acceleration will cause most of the photoresist to spread to and eventually off the edge of the substrate, leaving an extremely thin film of photoresist on the surface. Shown here is an actual video of the spin coating process. A photolithographic mask is a pattern printout that only allows light to travel through clear portions and effectively blocks light from traveling through others. Essentially, the pattern design on the mask is transferred to the wafer surface. First, the user must design a template for their micro device. Design software such as AutoCAD is then used to draw these templates and make sure the dimensions are precise and the features are properly aligned. Shown here are the designs of two photo masks used to create the frame and hinge layers of our micro device. When the AutoCAD design file is complete, it is usually sent off to a company that utilizes precise microprinting machines to print the photo mask. Contact mask aligners are used in most microfabrication research laboratories. Nearly all microscale devices and structures require more than one photo mask step. The contact aligner allows the user to align microscopic features already on a wafer with those on a photo mask. Prior to using the mask aligner, the photo mask is mounted onto a glass plate. The mask is then loaded onto the mask aligner and held down with a high vacuum to prevent any type of movement during operation. Next, the silicon wafer with the layer of photoresist is loaded into the mask liner. The mask liner's 